I just rode 3,000 kilometers solo from Perth to Alice Springs to meet my friend Ben Grabham. From Alice, we ventured south through Fink, exploring remains of the old Garn Railway, and crossed into South Australia through sections of the Udna Data Track, then made our way across to Coober Pedy, which is where I've run into some fuel and ignition dramas with my old Africa twin. Same, same. Shut him off from the book. Yeah, I don't know mate, I was hoping to see some water out of that float bowl. The old girl is still firing, so I've decided to push on to the next town, put some fresh fuel in her, and see if we can't solve this misfiring issue. So it's off with the tank. The new Norden seems to be running fine on the Kuba PD fuel, so we'll tip this lot into her tank. Probably hoping for a magic fix here, Benny, but I'd at least like to just try fresh fuel before. The good juice. No such luck, she's still not happy. So we've pulled up, unplugged some electrical connectors and checked the spark plugs. They're really sooty, which explains her misfiring. A quick plug clean has put some life back into the old girl, so we've decided to alter our route and ride on through the night towards a town called Roxby Downs. From there, I'll perform a full service on the old Honda, buy some new spark plugs, and hopefully have the warhorse running her best once again. Yep, all the plugs are black and on the verge of fouling. A batch of bad fuel compounded by a dirty air filter. We've addressed the problem early enough to not be stranded out in the scrub. A fresh clean air filter and a full set of new spark plugs. The warhorse should be ready to charge onward once again. We're back on track and heading for Port Augusta to resume our original course through the Flinders Ranges. It's funny, you have one night in civilization, all you want to do is just get back out there and find a riverbed to camp in and cook our little tuna pasta and bush coffee. bush coffee and sit under the stars. Doesn't take long to miss it, does it? This is as close as I've ever been when I drive past. Well, we're heading straight for it. This looks amazing. It does. I can't wait. War horse is ready. <laughs> right, right. Wow, she's... That she's the conditions. Australian safari. Sick track for the morning. Ah, it's unreal. Kangaroos, kangaroo. Yeah, my friends. And about it's about the same the, number. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say about the same size mob as I got. Yeah. Probably the same same size roo too. Yeah. In 2012, while leading the Condo 750 rally. Grabo collided with yeah. a small mob of kangaroos at over 150 kilometers per hour. He was lucky to survive, Someone's despite also breaking several vertebrae in his spine.
tracking towards a route that I'm hoping will get us up and into the Stirling Ranges. I often do this on my travels around the world, Benny, and uh, it's at these points, I'll call them the point of no return because this is about to get pretty serious, my friend. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <laughs> the Norden has more square edge on its rear tyre than you do. <laughs> Just let it rock spit down the back. Cool. Is seemingly okay and we're tracking into the range until we hit a locked gate. Sort of getting out of here with our tail between our legs but I feel like I found another route that should, with a bit of luck, be a four wheel drive track right the way through. We keep hitting dead ends and gates, so there's no real option but to drop back down to the foothills and work our way into the ranges through the main road. Once I done me sag and done me fork height, I'm sweet. She's a whole different beast once you drop those forks through, eh? Yeah, she was a bit of a old wiggly worm before. Oh, what an epic run this is. This is the Flinders Hey. <laughs> like you get, get those brakes working. Yeah, no ABS here. It's all up to you. You can have the, oh, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I need to go the grid. Oh, <laughs> I, I didn't even see that. No, I was about to get on the gas and let you have the grid. <laughs> All right. <coughs> whoa. Right, where were we?
I'm the only one with GPS nav and waypoints to keep us heading in the intended direction. But it's obvious Grabo's just loving the ability to free range his way around me. Oi. Bob and Marge have infiltrated every conceivable campsite throughout this valley. There's more of them up here on the left. Oh damn, Bob and Marge would struggle a little bit coming up here. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Oh. That is cool. Mate. How the hell are you? I recognise these blokes. <laughs> <laughs> Could it come in a bit? We've, um, we haven't been able to hide anywhere in the outback. No. We've been no. Uh, spotted a long way off. <laughs> it's, it's the pink, isn't it? I think so. The pink and the purple. I want to follow your channel too. So. Oh, cheers, mate. No, no worries. What do you run? Uh, I've got a DR650. Yeah. Aussie, great Aussie battler. Exactly. Had a bit of fuel issues and spark issues um, yesterday, the day before, but we got it yeah. dialed. Just managing carbies in the outback is a yeah, whole yeah. different thing. Like, you don't even know. Those things are just sorting out so much shit for you. Yeah. Oh, Altitude. Uh, electronic. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the, doing it for you. Until it doesn't. Yes. At least this thing, you can, like, no, we're not stopping here. you got to keep <laughs> going, you know? Yeah. A couple of mates with me, they got. KDM 500s. Yeah, so bulletproof. Got, yeah. I'd, 15 model KDM 500s. Yeah, ETs. that's one of my favourite dirt bikes of all time. And unreal. Well, my own bike's been using 5 litres more than what they It's in the same distance. Just being yeah. a carburetor thing. And oh, so you, you DR's Carby? Yeah, Carby. Yeah. What a legend. <laughs> so there's no such thing as a fuel injected DR650. No. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, I'll leave you to it. Yeah, no Trevor worries. Nice. Sorry, what was it? Trevor. Name? Trevor, Adam. That's all right. Yeah, Thank nice to meet you, mate. No worries. You want to see him come in? I thought, oh, I know that bike. <laughs> well, she d it's, it's the real thing. Yeah. 1992 model. Is it 92? Yes. 31 years old. Wow. Stock. I'm still doing the business. Stock, yeah. except for the Acro. Flat area. Surrounded. Good stuff. We found a campsite that not even Bob and Marge could get to. Wasn't expecting to shot have to <laughs> shotgun a rum, but um, cheers to the Norden. And Good cheers man. to the war horse. Mmm, bad.
The, the manufacturers are in this weird horsepower spec sheet race and you said the other day about you don't want to be doing hard in, hard enduro you don't want to be like it's no. funny how they're utilizing you know birchie's doing the slow willies and and on the 890 and they got poltaris doing mad stuff on the t7 they had mayo Yep. Riding a motocross yep. track mm -hmm. on the Ducati Desert X, like they're all out to try and prove their adventure bike as like this strangely capable enduro bike that no one who's dropping between twenty five and thirty five thousand dollars are ever going to do anything like that with <laughs> them. No. How many of them though? And this is where it gets real. How many <clears throat> bikes are marketed? in the way that we're actually doing it. How many of them can back their machine for 10 to 20 to 30 to 40,000 Ks of busted out, bulldust, corrugated roads that will just rattle a motorcycle to death? Pretty much everything we've been doing for the last week. That's it. But none of them are pitching them as doing that. I think they've got their lifestyle mixed up in there, their whole marketing spin. Oh, it's like you say, I reckon they're, they're all chasing those numbers and then trying to look at all, make it all look fancy with a minute clip of racing around a hard enduro track or a motocross track. And 99% and 90, of riders that buy these things are never going to do never. anything like that. Never. <clears throat> never. Like, I could attempt to do some of that stuff and I'm not even interested in doing it. If I'm going to do that, I'll ride it on a proper bike for that. I think the war horse is going to front up for work. Benny, fuel pumps on. I take great satisfaction in sharing my passion for motorcycling especially when it's with a friend who is equally passionate. In my experience, adventure bike riding is the closest you'll get to freedom on a motorcycle. Keep it simple, don't be strictly bound to an itinerary, just fuel up, point towards the horizon and let the adventure unfold. Flinders are now in our rear vision mirrors, and the vast plains of outback Australia lay ahead. <laughs> All this bush chook has got us feeling peckish. Pepper, far out. Chilly, it is too. This is gonna.
After a quick blow by on Bob and Marge, it seems Grabo has a problem. Nah, oi, bring her over to the tire, pull. bring her over to the tire press. The, 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 I was going to say the rock crusher. Just, <laughs> the rock crusher, get her under here, Benny, we'll, we'll, we'll pop that for you. Ready? She won't withstand the war horse. Yeah. Yeah, you might as well. Oh, yeah. It's just torn completely off from the heat. You know, you'd, you'd literally want to re-drill that in the centre. Yeah. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> yep. It's always, Yo, it's always, that it's is hot. hot. There's always a way, like I look at shit and no, no, I won't question the... the so dumb. ...the ones that do it all. So dumb. I Honestly, just... You can drill the thing out in the middle. You'd have to. Oh yeah. Just imagine the like. Imagine it when I was doing like two hundred. Oh. <laughs> Side swig, I reckon. <laughs> Compressor, I got it on the internet from the UK. Yeah, it's unreal. Yeah, man. We lose half an hour in about 500 meters. Yeah, we're about to cross from South Oz back to New South Wales. I don't know, she's a bit drizzly. Oh! <laughs> yeah, she's pretty rough and wild looking. Mustering bike on the station. Get out. Oh, she's got no front width tire on it. What happened? Then the guy, the last time he rode it, the kangaroo knocked him off it. They broke the headlight. And that's the last time and, she and, fired a shot. And she's had put it in the shed and been sitting ever since. Motorcycle stories can be the most interesting stories. 
and the second you throw a leg over one, you begin writing that story. We're on the home stretch now. Three and a half thousand k's together, getting closer to Grabo's hometown of Bathurst. And clearly, he's already for work sending emails on the fly. And so efficient has the Norden been on fuel, Grabo's still carrying his bladder full from Kuba Pedi. I think it is Kuba Pedi fuel. Oh, that bag of Kuba Pedi fuel is putting and she's running like an old hairy goat, doesn't like it at all. It's like surgeon, it must have some kind of shit in the fuel. I'm actually pleased to know the fuel was a problem and the warhorse wasn't just being a sook. Yeah, so she done, she done pretty good to make it as far as it did. It's a bit sad going home to be honest, but I'm sure we'll um, find another adventure like we always do. Yeah, mate. I've covered a lot of ground over the years with Grabo. We work and play well together. So while it's a little sad this ride is over, yeah, take it, easy, mate. Good, it won't be long before we're creating some other wild adventure. This was definitely my first adventure bike ride of this kind. I've been on many adventure bike rides before, but we've had vehicles or we've just been going from motel to motel and not really supporting ourselves so to throw the bags on the side and put in the tent and the little sleeping bag and the blow up pillow and the little gas cooker just a little bit instinct survival mode and uh, it's been a little bit of a reset for me and uh, it's, yeah, it's been an amazing experience that's for sure. Going on uh, adventure like this with Riemann it's definitely a uh, very unique experience. Uh, he's he really is an um, adventure moto nomad. It's right up my alley, to be honest. I love rough and tough or, or looking after yourself and diving into the unknown, and, and that's what Riemann's all about. There's no sooking, there's no worrying, there's no fussing. We just dive head first in there and just overcome whatever lays ahead, and, and that's been the best part of the whole experience. The War Horse, uh, obviously, I've watched some of uh, Riemann's YouTube episodes on it when he picked her up overseas, and it's awesome to see it in person. Got a bit of a connection back to Hondas from when I used to race with them, so it was nice to, to jump on and, and have a spin and it was cool just just helping him with some few little shoes and bits and pieces and soldiering on with it but um, the old war horse is a pretty reliable trusty old steed and what a machine it, it, it's awesome being able to like I've spent eight nine days on the on the latest greatest Husqvarna Norton and, and and it's an unreal machine but um, what a weapon going back 30 years like the war horse they they definitely got it right back in the day. She purrs along, like it may not be the fastest thing, but it's, it's still fast enough to get you arrested. Like it's super comfortable and super stable and just, just everything you'd hope a, a good trusty adventure bike would be in the desert. Yeah, it's definitely a memorable experience spending a week alongside the war horse and hopefully I may even get to do one like this again in the future. I'm no different. I'm just a fanatic like the rest of you, you know? Like, look, it's a fucking 31-year-old motorcycle. Just punched it through the guts of Australia, and now I'm going back. <laughs>